Okay, so we're going to talk about the empirical rule here. The empirical rule is like Chebyshev's theorem. It tells us what percentage of the data is between uh, two points on the number line. The nice thing about the empirical rule is that it gives us a little more precise uh, results. Chebyshev's theorem, you know, if the answer came out to be 75%, remember that was at least 75%. So we're saying something like, well, at least 75% of the data is in this interval. The downside to that is that that could be anywhere from 75 to 100. But Chebyshev's theorem didn't have any assumptions about the shape of the distribution. It could be used for any distribution at any time. In the case of this rule, the empirical rule, we're going to have to know that the distribution is bell-shaped. So we're going to be looking for the distribution to have this shape. If we know, or we have good reason to believe that it's bell-shaped, then we're going to be able to say, okay, we can get a little better results than we had with the Chebyshev's theorem. We can be a little more precise. And what we're going to discover is that when you move out to one standard deviation away from the mean, when k is equal to 1, the percentage that we'll be able to capture in that span is a full 68%. I put this little symbol in front of the 68 to indicate approximately 68. It's not exactly 68, it's approximately 68. But either way, it's very close to this number. So, and the way that's represented on the curve would be like this. If our mean was here, and let's just say for argument's sake that the mean is 10 and the standard deviation is 2 for this data set. So it has a bell-shaped distribution with a mean of 10, standard deviation of 2. Then the center here would be 10. If you go out to 12 and down to 8, you've covered one standard deviation, let's say. And that one standard deviation, in that span, we'd have exactly 60, not exactly, but approximately 68% of the data. And the thing that's nice about this rule, since it applies to a bell-shaped curve, and the bell-shaped curve is symmetric, meaning there's equal space on both sides of the mean, we can say that this 68 is 34% on the right and 34% on the left. That's where we get the total of 68%. So going one standard deviation above, we'll capture 34% from here to here. Going one below, we'll capture another 34%. The total span of one standard deviation captures 68% of the data. That's a really nice trait that we have with this rule. Because it's symmetric, we know that half is on each side. We didn't have that, again, with Chebyshev's theorem. We didn't know the shape, so we didn't know if it was symmetric. So we didn't know when we said that at least 75% was inside the interval. We didn't know how that broke down. We didn't know if half of it was on this side, half of it was on the other side. We really had no way to know that. But here in this rule, we have that. Of course, we need that assumption of the bell curve, though. That's not always easy to come by. Sometimes we just don't know if it's bell-shaped in distribution. But if it does, have this shape, and we have this rule, this idea. Okay, so that's one standard deviation when k is 1. Remember, k represents the number of standard deviations above and below the mean used, right? That's the mean plus sigma, the mean minus sigma. All right, let's look at another drawing. Same type of idea, but for when k is 2. When k equals to 2, we capture approximately 95% of the data. So that's a lot of the data, right? That's almost everybody, right? Just 5% lies outside of that interval. And when we do that drawing, we'll be able to break it down like this. OK, so again, mean in the center, let's say that's 10. Now if you go out to 12 and then to 14, in that case, it'll be, right, because the standard deviation is 2. That's two standard deviations away from the mean. Okay. Now, if you go back to 8 and then to 6, you now have two standard deviations below the mean. That whole span, the mean minus two standard deviations, the mean plus two standard deviations, that will capture approximately 95%. So approximately 95% of the data is between here and here. That's a very powerful bit of information. Very good. Now, again, you can break it down into two sides. Half of the curve from here to here will be half of 95, or 47.5%. This half, 47.5%. That's, again, that nice trait of symmetry. We also know that each piece here is 34 and 34 for that one standard deviation mark. That's 68%. The remaining uh, Thirteen and a half percent are going to be from here to here, here to here. That's really nice. Okay, now one more drawing like this. One more, 
And that's for the scenario where you have three standard deviations away from the mean. When you have three standard deviations away from the mean, you capture 99.7%. So the only bit of data that gets outside of that uh, span of three standard deviations is 0.3%. And that's going to be, you know, a small little bit at the top end, small little bit at the bottom end because it's split in half. So basically almost everything, almost everything is contained within three standard deviations on a bell curve. So draw the bell curve again. This time we're going to have mean at 10, but we're not going to go out two standard deviations, but three. So that's going to be 12, 14, 16 now, right? And on the other end, we'll go down to 8, 6, and 4. And that total span will capture 99.7% of all the data, approximately. So from here to here, captures nearly everything. There's a very tiny bit here, the 0.15% out there. And on this end, it's 0.15% out here, right? So a very small amount of area left outside of that span. But almost everything is located between minus 3 standard deviations and plus 3 standard deviations. That's in the mean minus 3 sigma, the mean plus 3 sigma. And so we're going to see in the video examples for problems that relate to this idea that there's going to be many ways we can break this down because of the symmetry. So we have more flexibility with this rule than we did with Chebyshev's theorem.